Hey guys, so um, this is a tutorial on UV matting using the Pokey Stick Challenge. As you can see here, I had to try it again because uh, we had a winner for the challenge in class. And I have something about the cookies and cream concept that I find appealing. You're going to see why. Uh, is to have a box that is uh, mapped uh, using Blender, that is UV mapped using Blender. Okay. Um, so let's get on with the challenge all to the tutorial then, uh, which is made in two parts. So part one is to make the map, okay, uh, or the texture. And this is why I'm showing you this uh, picture. To map an object, just as we're doing when mapping a territory, implies to try to represent the totality of the object in a way that the whole object is being seen. Okay, so kind of like unperspectivize it. Uh, what do I mean by unperspectivize? Well, when we see a physical object, particularly if we look at it photographically, uh, we see it from a certain point of view. Okay, um, like in this box here, in this pocket here, we see it from that point of view. Uh, so all the faces of that object that are not visible disappear as if they did not exist. A map that only represents what is visible doesn't have uh, any way to uh, warn uh, people about the dangers of the invisible or the uh, hopes and dreams that are beyond uh, what this image uh, is doing. And this is an image that is based on perspective. To unperspectivize an object then is to take that charge uh, of the unique point of view that omits part of the object. Uh, and that's why I, uh, I, I'm interested in just opening the box, right? When you open the box, you s almost see all of the faces of the object. I don't have the faces of the back, but it is unperspectivized in a way. Um, the box, which doesn't have then to be a pokey box, is an excellent, ex excellent example because the box is a flat object that reaches us uh, as a box and that we can unfold okay it basically comes to us folded and we can unfold it uh, we can do this digitally by taking uh, photographs of multiple points of view of uh, perspective of the box like we did in class like here uh, and joining these images in photoshop or by unfolding the box and taking just a single photograph, which is what I did in class. I mean, what I did after class. The important thing though, and this is the crucial thing about this whole concept of mapping an object, is that hopefully the totality of the box or the object fits into one image. Okay. It is interesting in this regard to uh, look at UV maps from uh, the gaming industry or stuff like that. So, so if I see a UV map of a character, there you see that that's the 3D character and that's the map. Okay, so even stuff that is not visible in the model is visible uh, in the map. Okay. So here I am in Photoshop and I have this uh, tiny form factor computer that I use sometimes, very small and very conveniently it's shaped sort of like a box uh, and i will and i took photographs of this uh, tiny computer from every angle so just like a dice right six uh, from like just six photographs and i'm going to make one image that contains all of these photographs so this one i won't use okay um so I will use this one. I didn't put the sticker, but it's kind of nice. And uh, I will create a new image. That is new. When it asks for the size, I'm going to keep it small, 2048 by 2048. So it's tiny. Uh, computer images for computer textures for 3D are always squared. That's like the standard. I don't know why, but that happens. So I have this image here and I'm going to do, go into edit and copy or command C or control C. Then I'm going to close this one. 
I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to paste it here. And I'm going to press Command T or Control T. That brings the transform menu and I will scale it towards the side. I know that I need to fit all of the images here and I want to be very efficient. So I'll just put it here. And I have the top, which has a lot of information and I will just select a part. So using the marquee tool, the shortcut is M. I can press Command C. Go back into my untitled document and scale it a bit. Double click and that's it. Uh, the bottom is kind of important. Same thing, using the marquee tool, Command C. Close the image, don't save it. Paste it here. And I'm gonna put it here too. To Photoshop, we have this uh, cubist view of everything here. Uh, and I will now try to fit everything in one, um, in one layer. Um, quick tip for Photoshop, if you have different layers, you can right click and choose the layer. So I will right click and choose this layer. Make sure that they are sort of the same size. And because if you have a layer that has less size than the other, uh, it will show less definition. But here we have a uh, cubist dream. We have all of the perspectives in one uh, image, in one plane. It re it's representing the whole object. So now we do layer in the, main, in the top menu and flatten image. Or alternative, we just go into file, save as, make sure that we save on our computer. I put it on the desktop and I make sure that it's a JPEG file. If it doesn't show you the alternative of a JPEG file, you can uh, click on save as copy and do JPEG and do desktop. And I will call it this, that's the brand name of the computer. Always name your puppy, uh, Minus Forum um, Cupcake Mini PC. And in the options, I will set it to 10, something like that. Okay, so that's it. That's the part of the map. Alternatively, uh, you could use, if you're using something like, um, like a box of a product or something, or a, a pack of uh, uh, chips or something like that, you could just uh, unwrap the package or an, an Amazon box would work well too and unwrap it and take one photograph because functionally it is the same thing. Uh, just in this case is kind of an analog version and in the case of this box is a digital version. Actually, and now we go into part two. So for this test that I did uh, after class, this test is done using the second method. So I have uh, this image in Blender. I go into UV editing and show you some stuff about Blender 2 in case you haven't tried that. Um, this is concentrated on UV mapping. So basically if you uh, click and drag or on this uh, colorful icon there, that means uh, rotate or orbit the scene. If you click and drag on the hand, you're panning in the scene. If you click and drag on the magnifier, you are zooming in or out. Alternatively, if you middle mouse click and drag, you move around. If you wanna zoom in, you can use the scroll wheel. We are actually going to start from zero here. 
So this is the start menu in Blender. So you start with this cube. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into this, I call this like the rainbow menu because it's basically one of the few colorful things here. But we go into this icon, this red icon in the bottom, that is a checkerboard inside a sphere. And you will see that the first option says there's a base color. You will click on the yellow dot. You will go to the second column and you will choose image texture. This will add something to this menu. You have the option of, of uh, selecting new, but you will choose open. And in this case, I will use the texture or the map I just made in Photoshop. So desktop, means form, cupcake, mini PC. And that's it. And it's not very exciting because we don't see anything. Uh, why we don't see anything? Because we're not in a, way, in a mode in Blender that allows us to visualize textures. So you can um, hit the Z key and select the Z key opens a menu, as you can see here, and you can select a material preview or render it. I will choose material preview. And now I do have the texture, but the texture is sort of like not linked to the, um, it's not linked to the object. So we will go into one of the top uh, tabs of the software where it says UV editing, you select that and you will see well you'll see a flat representation of the box object and on top of the map okay um, when you're in this mode you can select you will find out that it's kind of hard to select stuff but if you press the three button in your keyboard if you press three and you select one face it will start to make more sense Okay, because you can select a face and then move the face around. We'll see that in a moment. We'll select that top face here and we want the top face to coincide with that face because that represents the top of the computer on the photograph, right? And we move it a bit. We can't see the texture yet, so we're going to press C again and we're going to go into material preview. Good, so again, I select the face. I did that by selecting, hitting three, so I can select faces. And now that I selected the face, I can start moving these uh, vertices. So I can choose the vertices here. The left window is the UV mapping window. So I can click and drag this here. This is very therapeutic. I'll click and drag this here. And click and drag this here. And if I zoom in and rotate, I'll see that this is matching the box rather almost perfectly. Uh, notice this thing though. This has some distortion because I took the photograph uh, with a camera. So there was some distortion and I didn't care about being like the photo being very flat, but we're correcting that distortion by changing the um, by changing the shape of the cube here, of the, of the square. Good. So I go back here, I'll go into this section, this, I'll select this cube here, and I'll make sure that this one is the front, the, the cupcake. I'll press one to select um, the vertices. And I'll press G and just drag them out. Probably forgot that, I'm sorry if I did, but if you press uh, G for grab, you can move stuff around. Alternatively, you can use uh, this button here that says move. And here we have one first sort of uh, mapping mistake. You see, it's the wrong way. So this is the right way. Again, I point to this uh, vertex, vertex and I move. And make 
sure that it matches well. I pan in the scene by pressing shift and clicking and dragging the middle mouse button. Okay. And yes, now it's working well. Actually, now I can go back into this box. This is not the size I wanted and I can press the scale button, which is here to the left and drag on this uh, blue box. If I just click the box, I can make this a bit flatter shorter so that it matches the object that I'm trying to represent. Good, now I'll do the back. I'll select this side here. And I'll make sure that the orientation is right. So I'm looking on that side and the other. And this is how the orientation should be. I click on the vertex, I press G for grabbing or alternatively the move button, transform move button, and I drag this to the corners. And we can also correct stuff later. But uh, I'll select another face here and I'll just fast forward uh, for the, I'll pause this for a second um, and I'll do all the faces and come back very quickly. And here after some patience and I had tried this a lot, but I have my virtual mini computer. Uh, this is very low polygon, right? But now if I select this object here and I press the tab key and I press the A for all, you will see that I have uh, the map and the object and each face on the object corresponds to a space uh, in the map. Okay, that's sort of like the way um, maps should work as we saw last class. And now I did this in class before. Um, so this is a tiny bonus point if you want to try some stuff that is kind of um, fun-ish. Um, this box here, I, uh, we can pretend that it's a um, bag of chips or something. Uh, and that is very, like technically kind of simple. You go into the, that wrench there uh, this is the first step uh, to inflate this as a balloon. You go into a wrench there, you add a modifier, you add a, a second column here, subdivision surface. Jeez, now it looks like a contemporary uh, no-name video game console. You make sure that you have set, to set this to simple. You press this a couple of times so that it says three. Don't go over three or four. You press here on this icon and press apply. And then you go into another part of the rainbow menu, which is the planet surrounded by a satellite. And you press cloth. And now this will behave like a cloth. It will fall down and fold a bit. Um, but what we did in class was that you can make sure to enable pressure and you set it with a pressure of say five. And now it's inflated. Uh, it's a soft PC pillow, uh, which is kind of compelling to have a pillow computer. Yes, it is. Um, and that's it with this. It will fall forever unless you make an object on the floor. So to add an object, you're going to add mesh and you add, in this case, a plane. Uh, I'll make it very large and I will, uh, on physics, I will select collision. And this should make the bouncy PC fall. And that's it. Um, so this is a bonus point, okay? But uh, what I do ask you to do is to upload um, is to save this file 
to the shared folder. Okay, so this uh, to do this, you're going to file external data, automatically pack resources, then going to file save as, and Blender has a bit of a weird menu system. Um, you're going to here. I'm going to save this into desktop, and I'm going to put it uh, as cupcake PC. It's going to write a cupcake PC dot blend. Make sure that you have the uh, file external data automatically pack resources, or else uh, it will save without a texture, which would be kind of boring. And then we take this this file that is. Um, we know what the file is now. It's a cupcake PC. And we upload this file to uh, our shared folder. Okay, so here's cupcake PC, and I will upload that to the shared folder. Uh, this file, please have it ready before class again on Thursday, uh, uploaded to the file. So we have an assembly of rectangular objects we really like. And um, come to class prepared thinking about another kind of object that is not like a box or something like that, uh, that you would like to map, okay? Um, come prepared, though. So, uh, if you can bring a photograph or upload a photograph of that object, that would be very nice. Um, and that's it for now. Uh, see you Friday. Take care.